Hey guys, Philosopher here, and today we're talking about what the smartest investments are for Dark Dimension. This is a little different than saying, you know, what are the best characters or what characters can I take or should I take for Dark Dimension? <clears throat> this is all about which characters are going to get me bang for the buck elsewhere. And, you know, this is really relevant. I put out a video the other day, which you may have seen, The Great Reset, where I talk about how there's just this massive power creep in the game right now. It's, it's basically making it so the old characters are worth far, far less than they once were. There's a real incentive now to focus on these new characters. And I think that that has to take, you have to take that into account if you're a newer player and you're picking your GD2 team, your GD3 team, your GD4 team. So this is a, a video I'm making on the request of a bunch of newer and mid-game players from the Voltage Sauce Beginner Discord. I hope it, and I'll link that below. Uh, it's a good place for newer players uh, to hang out and share info. But what I would just say to you as a starting point <clears throat> is that any of the newer OP characters or newly reworked characters are going to do great in Dark Dimension, let's say Dark Dimension 2 to start there. I haven't tested Captain Sam in Dark Dimension 2, but I would be blown away if he wasn't amazing there. Kestrel, Silver Surfer, I'm sure Gamora and Nebula are fine. Philavel, you know, obviously your newer player's not going to have Adam Warlock, um, or, or, and you're not going to have Doom, but you know, you're going to have any of these, Moon Dragon, Maria Hill and Sharon Carter. These, these characters will do fine. DD2 is already something you could auto if you had a good team. And all I would say is, you know, I had previous my previous advice to people, and I, as you know, on this infographic which I've linked below, was hey, use any five characters from here, and you'll just be able to blow through DD two. That's still true, but I would just say that any of the newer characters should have no problem, no problem with DD two. So you could just kind of put any of them in that you can, as many of those in, frankly, as you can. I would do it. <clears throat> I would do it because all those characters are OP. Now, an exception, just in case there's any confusion, is Heroes for Hire. Heroes for Hire, while they, they'd be decent, uh, I don't think that they have that utility to other game modes. But Infinity Watch, uh, Secret Avengers, the New Warriors, when they come out, I, we don't even know the full team, but I, they already, you know, the one we know about, Deathpool, looks amazing. I'm recording this on August 9th, okay? So I don't know the full team. Silver Surfer, Kestrel. All amazing, all of Infinity Watch, all amazing characters. Any of them, I think, can go in GD2 and you'll be able to auto. I don't have, um, I obviously, you know, have not tested them in DD2 myself, but, you know, from at least some of these characters like Kestrel and Silver Surfer and Captain Sam, I'm hearing amazing things from people who do. So let's go to the harder question, GD3 and GD4. Let's start with GD3. <clears throat> now... I have not updated this infographic recently. It's linked below. And the reason I haven't is because this was based on extensive testing back when gear tier 14 was the top gear. But now all my characters are gear tier 15. And I, ca I can't test these characters at gear tier 14. And it's not fair to test them at 15 and bring them in because all you know they have an advantage. So I'm relying more on word of mouth. But here's what I would say. <clears throat> you know, of these characters here... It's very say there's no question from players that have been using d characters in DD3 that you know ca for the first five because you need five characters to enter DD3, and then you have global, cosmic, and city. And what I basically suggest here is you know bring in you know five absolute core characters. And what I what I will just say is Kestrel is amazing, Silver Surfer is amazing, the Infinity Watch characters are fantastic, and they can be totally fine in your first five. Captain Sam I'm sure would also be totally fine in your first five. <clears throat> and they're all going to have use elsewhere. You know, the, you, I guarantee you that Doom 2 raid, I, 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 I don't know for sure, but I would bet my bottom dollar that the skill section is going to be balanced around, tuned around the Secret Avenger team. The New Warriors team is going to be the baseline for what you're going to need in Mystic. They're going to tune the Mystic nodes off of that, right? You know, the Infinity Watch team already, you know, is so important, right, in Arena and War and elsewhere. Those are teams, Kestrel and Silver Surfer, core characters in the game. So using those characters as much as possible, I think, is going to be important. Of the characters that are here, which of these characters are important? Well, and what, which ones are worth and savvy investments? I do think that 
Ghost is a worthwhile investment because right now there are more good cosmic characters. There's tons of good cosmic characters coming out, but there aren't a lot of good global characters. So I think she's a good investment. She'll always, you know, have some value in Dark Dimension. So will Phoenix, by the way, as a Dark Dimension only character. But I think, <clears throat> you know, I think Ghost can it can be a pretty strong standalone character. It's very accessible for newer players through the War Store. Uh, and I, you know, a lot of newer players have just been running her instead of Phoenix. So I think this is a much more accessible character. I do think she's worth building, uh, particularly as we'll go through DD4. Um, I think um, that, uh, you know, in global, she's still a, a worthwhile character. The rest of these characters aren't, you know, I, I have questions about. What I will say is the symbiotes are still the best bio team in raids. They are still what you need for the city nodes um, of Dark Dimension. So I think, you realistically, you're going to need to build symbiotes. But I do worry, wonder, whether or not they're going to get replaced soon. Whether they get replaced by a new symbiote, like Null or Cole or whatever his name is, comes in as like some new guy who soups up the symbiotes, or there's an entirely new team, I can't be sure. I don't know because uh, I don't try to, you know, I, I don't try to guess what the future could hold and, and Scopely deliberately keeps us in the dark. But I will just say that the, the of these investments, you know, here, you know, I think Ghost is a safe one. All those new characters I mentioned at the top are safe ones. And then I would say, um, you know, the symbiote you kind of have to right now. But this is one that could could turn south sometime soon. Regarding global, <clears throat> let's just I'm going to go for global, cosmic, and city. We're actually just going to go to my roster, all right? Because I think that's the simplest way of looking at it. Because we're looking at this, mind you, from a perspective of long term value. So global, I think Captain Sam, Maria Hill, and Sharon Carter are very solid choices. And so is, by the way, I would say, you know, Jubilee and Beast as a pair could be a solid, you know, solid choices for the value they bring elsewhere, not for how they perform in the notes. In other words, taking this strategy, I mean, Ghost is going to help carry you through Global and DD3. Phoenix, you know, if you want to take her, but Ghost probably got more value elsewhere, or is probably more accessible for newer players. <clears throat> but a lot of these other characters... Their, their, their value elsewhere for the future is more in doubt. You know, Zemo is not a great performer within the nodes. He can be pretty brittle. Depends on how big you star him and everything else and red stars. You know, Black Widow is on a meta team, but, you know, how long? I mean, skill military, how important are they going to be for a while? Um, you know, Nick Fury is super expensive to gear and, like, you know, just sort of useful as a placeholder you know, with Secret Avengers and Kestrel for now. I don't, I am not sold there. X-23 is a good character, but boy, X-Force is really starting to trend downward, and they're just a war team. Uh, Shuri, still a very solid character, but has a great kit, but man, look at that health on her. I mean, she is not what she used to be. Now, will you be fine in DD3 with her? Yes. Is she still useful in... Um, in the Doom Raid ES, she can be one of your five in the Doom Raid, but I don't see her lasting that much longer unless there's some sort of rework. Uh, she's already replaced by many of my Alliance mates in Doom Raid Difficulty 1. They don't use her. I do, uh, at least on most nodes, but they don't. Uh, some people use, whether you use Minerva or whether you're using on the boss node, you're using Misty or you're using Nebula or whatever. There's plenty of other choices to use along with Doc Ock, Kestrel, and Doom, who basically do all the work. Um, so she's just not what she once was. Emma Frost is useful, but, you know, you might use her on a node in Doom Raid. You can use her on the base difficulty, regular difficulty, with the X-Factor team to provide that cleanse, but, you know, uh, difficulty one, I don't use her at all. I don't really use Sinister. The only views of Sinister is just a clone on the mutant boss, clone a long shot, second long shot. That's his only value in Doom Raids. <clears throat> and in War, Emma Frost and Sinister aren't that important. Shuri's really only value in War is just feeding energy to Doom. 
you can put her with Doom on defense, and that can create some RNG factor. Um, you know, the res, uh, Red Guardian, I actually think, has some use. He's still useful in Doom Raids. That may change. We'll see whether or not he's, you know, he's useful in Doom Raid 2, but I can't imagine he'd be bad with, um, Secret Avengers. He certainly keeps himself alive, and he's got a good kit that will stand the test of time. So I think he's useful still. Taskmaster is really trending downward. You know, the rest of these characters I wouldn't, I wouldn't bring. <clears throat> I, I don't even think Kitty and Iceman are worth it. They're just they're, I under under gear mine purposely, and I do fine in difficulty one of Doom. The rest of these characters just not that important. Ultron, you know, just none of them are all that important. Let's go to Cosmic. Cosmic, to me, is like the easiest choice. There are so many amazing Cosmic choices. So if you can't figure out some really high meta choices here, you, you're, you're doing something wrong, okay? Um, unless you haven't been playing much and just haven't gotten all the free stuff. You know, Kestrel got thrown into our laps. Gamora and Nebula are, tri are trivial to get. Where's Nebula? You know, for everybody, she's in the Blitz store. Nebula is an early game farm. Uh, I wouldn't bring Thanos anymore. I don't think he's going to be on my raid team for very much longer now with the the new uh, Warriors. I certainly think the new Warriors for a long term are a reasonable investment. A Silver Surfer, um, you know, Silver Surfer is a no-brainer uh, sort of long-term investment. He's the only guy who removes charges and so forth. So I think he'll retain value for a while. Longshot and Chatterstar still have a, a lot of value. And by the way, you need them at gear tier 14 to unlock Adam Warlock anyway. So bringing them to DD3 is not uh, at all unreasonable. They perform very well. Um, you know, Adam Warlock, if you have him, I don't think most people who are just getting into DD3 will. He's certainly a, a good choice for the future. Or Phylavel or Moondragon, any of the Infinity Watch. I wouldn't put Bishop on his own in Cosmic. I don't think he's all that great on his own. But for purely for investment purposes, I think he's a reasonable character because you'll be using him in the Mutant Nodes and Doom for a while. And that's about it. <clears throat> you know, I already mentioned Shatterstar. Really, none of the rest of these characters are worth uh, bringing in or considering, in my opinion. That's it. It's just more of the newer stuff, but there's a lot of new stuff to choose from. City is going to be the hard part for DD3. Okay, and that's really just, in my view, I would just do symbiotes. Now, one thing that you need to, that's important to know for DD3, that DD3, you do not need to have a full team. They, they fix that to force us to have a bigger team, a full of uh, four characters in DD4. But for DD3, you know, I, I, there are plenty of players for global, okay, who just went, who blew through it with Phoenix. Where's my Phoenix? Phoenix plus like two other characters. You could do the same thing with Ghost. Ghost plus two other characters. I mean, three characters are fine for DD3 in Global. Four is better. This is the toughest section by far is Global. Cosmic, there are people blowing through Cosmic with like three characters, two, three characters, just as long as it's like, you know, if the characters are like Kestrel and Silver Surfer or something, right? Kestrel and the Dad Bros or whatever. Those characters, you know, Kestrel, Longshot, Chatterstar, whatever. Any kind of OP set of characters, you can easily do Cosmic with three characters. City, you can just do with two symbiotes. It's just much better with three. Uh, I, don't, I think any more than three is not necessary. It's overkill. You might as well save your orange gear so you can get it through, get up your characters gear to DD4 faster. And the, the ones I would suggest would be Symbiote, Spider-Man, Anti-Venom, and Scream because I think they're the ones that are most likely to survive like if let's say a new symbiote's introduced, you're not going to be replacing symbiote Spider-Man or anti-venom or likely even scream in your team. It'd probably be venom or carnage that you're dropping more likely venom uh, would be the first one to drop. But I, I think the, 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 these three are be, you know, you need symbiote Spider-Man for sure. <clears throat> and then I just, if of the others, I think anti venom and scream are the more likely ones to keep. Uh, if you're looking purely at investment for the future, and, and and Night Nurse is okay in DD4 as a choice, but uh, as like a but you know she's no longer necessary. I would say for the skill nodes in a Doom Rage, he's fine. Multiple Man is an okay-ish choice uh, because you need him eventually for Adam Warlock anyway, and that team's a good team. Okay, but you know the symbiotes are are just this this safest, safest chimple, cheapest way to do it. None of this really changes all that much for for dd4 although i will say if you look at my dd4 list which is going to change 
uh, pretty soon. I, I'm updating my DD4 infographic, but I have the current one up here below. A lot of this stuff is just all getting to be outdated meta because it's pre-Power Creep, pre the Great Reset. And so, you know, a lot. I, I think you're going to want to bring, you know, potentially, I haven't even tested them yet. I don't know how good they are, but if you're focused purely on the future, the Secret Avengers make a lot of sense in global, right? Uh, and in Cosmic, a lot of the new characters, and I'll be adding in in the new version that's coming out soon, these Infinity Watch characters, <clears throat> all those new characters you know, make a lot of sense for Cosmic. And for City, it's just basically symbiotes, and if you want to throw in Night Nurse or Multiple Man, I guess you can, but you don't really need, you know, only here, only because TD4 requires four. But then let's this brings us down to Legendary, <clears throat> and let, let's talk. I want to talk about Legendary here for a second. Because in DD4, they separated out Legendary. And what I would say for Legendary is Adam Warlock's fantastic. He'll be a high performer when the new infographic comes out. But, um, you know, for the future, purely for the future, you know, Adam Warlock, Doc Ock, and Jubilee seem to me like the best three choices. And then the question is just, which of the rest do you think you would use? <clears throat> Phoenix is the best within the nodes. Um, of of the other choices. And then the question is just, you know, who do you think you're going to get more value? Right now I use Ebony Maw and Raids. Doubt I will once the new Warriors or whatever they are come out. Black Bolt has some use in war. He's not like super central, but he's definitely useful against Heroes for Hire and so forth. Visible Woman, not so useful anymore. Nick Fury, eh. I use him right now in skill nodes because I run him with Secret Avengers and Kestrel, but, you know, you could use anybody with Secret Avengers and Kestrel and they'd blow through the nodes. So, you know, I think there aren't a lot of amazing choices here in Legendary, but the three least bad choices, certainly. Adam Warlock's very good. Jubilee is going to be useful for a while, uh, you know, in, in Doom Raid. And then Doc Ock, you know, is useful in the tech part of Doom Raid. And that's really it in terms of long-term value here. The rest, I think, all their value is kind of all pretty heavily on the downswing. Uh, Ebony Maw, um, Elise is in a top tier war team, but that team is not what it once was. It's good, but not amazing. <clears throat> so I will just, I will just say that, you know, is, you know, you know, is it possible to efficiently get through these, these, um, dark dimensions with characters that have a lot of future value? Yes, but only for players that have started very recently and, and have either wailed out or have gone really hard on every event and so forth and have every new character. I mean, I will say this. If you have, let's say, a three-star Kestrel or a two-star Captain Sam or a two-star Silver Surfer, I'd still bring him. And in fact, I've actually asked players, for example, who brought their two-star Silver Surfer, he still did well in DD2, DD3. I would just I would just do that because eventually they'll make these characters more accessible via shards. Their shards more accessible eventually, and you'll at least have the character geared up, and at least you have a relevant character. I think having a seven star, you know, sinister or something is just not as valuable as it once was. I think I'd rather gear up my two star Captain Sam or Silver Surfer and at least know that I'm investing in a character. That's going to have a longer shelf life, uh, given the massive power creep in the game uh, and, and you know, the way in which Scopely has just accelerated that in recent months. All right, guys, if you like this video, smash that like button, subscribe to this channel. If you got comments, leave them below or go to my Discord. Uh, we've got great discussions going on there. That's linked below as well. Also, check out my Twitch stream. That's linked below, and I try to uh, stream uh, weeknights when I can.